Welcome everyone and thank you for attending today's Flux webinar for admin training. Today we're going to walk through the various topics that appear on your screen right now. And uh, But first we have a couple of little announcements. For the first half of the webinar, I will be explaining how the listed topics here work. Um, during this time, if you have any questions, please post them in the GoToTraining um, chat to your right there. You might have to expand the window. Um, I'll address questions during the second half of the webinar. Okay. Uh, we also have Caitlin Gutierrez from Flux Staff on the webinar today along with Dane Robinson. Caitlin is here to help you with uh, technical issues as well as to help me by sorting through the chats for questions that come up during the training. So Caitlin will sequence the questions for me at the end and monitor the chat during the Q&A period. So please let Caitlin know if you're having connection issues or need technical help. Uh, I would like everyone to know that this webinar is being recorded and in order to make it available to you after the call, Caitlin will send an email after the webinar and make the link available to you. My hope is that this will allow you to focus on the content rather than uh, taking time to take uh, notes. So, is there any technical issues that you need to be resolved before beginning, Dane? Don't think so? I think we're all good. Okay. So let's get started. This webinar will provide training on how to make modifications to your Flux forms. Uh, this webinar is intended for the administrative user um, to learn basic skills in the Stencils admin panel. More complex form modification training will be provided through our advanced admin training in the near future. In this basic admin forms webinar, we are going to go over these, the following things. Um, a basic orientation to access and edit forms in the admin panel, the form builder flux terms, um, the most common changes made to forms by clients which include edits to the text and field descriptions, hiding or showing a field or a form object, uh, moving a field, adding a field, adding a drop-down value to a selected field, <laughs> managing groupings, very exciting stuff here. For the purposes of today's training, we will focus on the request, which is the most commonly updated form for our clients. The functionality we demonstrate to make edits to the request is the same functionality for all forms. If you can make edits to the request, you can use the same methods to modify other forms. So your environment is configured in an area we refer to as the admin panel, also known as the admin. In order to access the admin, you need to be logged in as a user with administrator privileges. Pretty straightforward. Admin access and orientation. For my internal login portal, I click the gear icon in the upper right hand corner of my web page and a menu of four items appears. I click on the first item in the list to get to the admin panel. The far left list includes the sections of the admin panel. The admin panel menu, the first four menu items, forms, workflow, card settings, and card documents are then organized by model types. A model type is the admin term for the cards you see in the internal portal. Model types are further organized by tabs and attributes. Today we will be working in the forms section of the admin. Request model type. The forms built within these model types are called themes. When I click on a theme, the stencil preview is displayed. This is how the form looks in the internal portal to the end user. You can't edit the theme from the stencil preview. When I click on the stencil preview, an error displays reminding me that I cannot edit from the preview mode. From the stencil preview, you can select a preview for any of the profiles set up in your environment. When I choose grantee, you can see that the stencil preview changes to display the grantee view. I can also choose the view type from the stencil preview. You can see the appearance of the form changes when I select another view type. The draft active buttons are used to publish the stencil. If the stencil is in draft, it won't show to an end user as you are working with it. Once active is clicked, end users can see it. The print icon is used to print the stencil view you were looking at. When I click on it, it opens a printable form in another tab. This can be saved to PDF or sent to your printer. The import-export functionality is used to import or export a JSON file. 
Um, we recommend that you do not use this. I'll say it again. We recommend that you do not use this. If you import a JSON file, you will override your existing form. We advise you to stay away from these functions, for the time being at least. Finally, we come to the Builder icon. Clicking on this will give you access to the Builder, where we will be making modifications to the form. Before building, we recommend following some best practices to make changes. We're using, we are using a test demo environment for the webinar. We strongly recommend to our clients that you make changes in your pre-production environment or pre-prod environment. The URL address for pre-production is www. whatever your foundation name is. dot preprod. dot fluxlabs. dot com. You should not make changes directly in your production environment without first testing them in pre-production, no matter how big or how small they are. We also recommend making a copy of an existing theme. So you can have the original version to refer to or copy again if your changes produce an unexpected result. To copy a theme, click New Theme. Under Clone from Existing View, click the View dropdown and choose the theme, the theme name you wish to copy. Add a name and a label in those text fields. Under Advanced Settings, Categories, click Grant Request and Save. Click on your new test theme label under the request model type. To make modifications, click the builder icon. Now some form elements. When you first open the builder, you will see objects that look like bars with colored tabs throughout the form. These objects are color coded by type. Objects with a yellow tab are text. These contain the text descriptions within your forms that are only editable through the admin panel. Objects with a light gray tab are spacers. Objects with a blue tab are fields and text areas. Objects with a pink tab are what we call components. Examples of components are on your forms are the funding source component, the tax ID search, organization component. Components are small groupings of fields or coded functionality. Objects with a green tab are groupings. Now, groupings are used to group other objects, which allows you to move multiple objects within the, within the form at the same time. Now, groupings also allow you to set visibility settings for all of the objects within the grouping, and apply formatting, styling, and color to the objects within that grouping. Hiding and showing a view type visibility, or hide show. On each of the objects in the admin, there are three icons, one for list view, one for detail view, and one for edit view. When these are light gray, it means that the object is not visible in a particular view. When the toggle is black or dark gray, it is visible. The list view is the list of records in a card. The detail view is the uneditable view of a record. When you click on a record in list view, the full record is displayed in detail view. The form is not clickable or editable in detail view. The edit view is displayed after clicking the edit button on a record. This view allows modifications and additions to the form. Form elements modifications. After all this orientation to the admin panel, we are finally ready to make some modifications. We'll start by editing text in the form. Text edits. This is an example of text in your forms. In order to make an edit, click on the bar in the admin panel that contains the text that you want to edit. When the object is highlighted in blue, you've successfully selected the object to modify. To edit text, click the Edit Text link under the Attributes tab. This opens the text window. To edit text, highlight the text you want to change. To add text, Type additional text. In order to save text, click Save in the text window as well as the Attributes tab. To test your changes, refresh the internal portal and view the card. Spacers. Now we will add spacers to the form. To add an object, scroll down the right side of the existing objects in your form. As you scroll, white plus signs will appear. So when you click on the plus sign, you need to define the type of object that you are creating. Scroll to the Attributes tab, 
then to the kind drop down and select spacers. You can also click a boolean to add a horizontal line or add multiple spaces by selecting a number above one. After adding any object, you always want to click Save in the Attributes tab. To test your changes, refresh the internal portal and view the card. Fields, moving fields. Next on the list is working with fields. First, we'll move fields within the form. In order to move a field on the form, click the field you want to move and drag it to the spot on the form where you would like it to be. To test your changes, refresh the internal portal and view the card. Fields, edit description. In order to change a field description on the form, click the field you want to edit. Under the Attributes tab, label field, change the field description, and click Save. To test your changes, refresh the internal portal and view the card. Fields, add drop-down values. In order to add drop-down values to a select field, click the field you want to edit. Next to the Attributes tab is the Values tab. Click this. To add a value to the select field, click the plus sign next to the attribute values. Add a name, a description, and a number to indicate the order it will show up in the dropdown. Click Create Model Attribute Value to save it. To test your changes, refresh the internal portal and view the card. To add a field, select Field. You may add an existing field in your field library by clicking the field dropdown. Scroll through the field labels and select a pre-existing field or scroll to the top and select Create New Field. For beginner field building, we recommend working only with text field, text area, number, and date. To test your changes, refresh the internal portal and view the card. As you can see, you can make the text fields required by clicking the required boolean under Attributes. For text areas, you can add a character limit by adding a number to character limit optional. You can also make the inputs editable by clicking Allow Rich Text Editing. Groupings. Now we'll look at some ways to work with groupings. One of the most helpful ways to work with groupings is to move them around the form. As you can see, groupings allow you to easily move multiple objects around on the form easily. You can also set visibility on groupings based on workflow state and or profile. If I pick employee under the profile selection and save it, the grouping will no longer be viewable to non-employee profiles. You can also assign workflow states as a conditional visibility. This may be used if you have a multi-step form for your grantee or specific form views designed for executives. So let's recap. In this webinar, we've covered admin panel access, admin panel orientation, model types and themes, navigating stencil preview and clickable elements, navigating the builder, and making form changes to text, fields, and groupings. And before we finish up, I also want to briefly discuss what not to do. Do not move nested groupings without having a clear idea if parent groupings contain visibility settings or conditional logic. Do not apply changes to live themes without testing them on a test theme in pre-production first. And finally, never delete a theme unless it is your test theme. So questions. I hope this webinar was helpful and I look forward to your questions.